Hey guys, welcome back. I'm here to do a video on periodic trends. So let's go ahead and talk about periodic trends. Um, so let me write that down here. Periodic trends. Now, periodic trends uh, involve a pattern on the, let's see if we can pull it up here, on the periodic table. The periodic table has trends throughout its uh, layout and that's what we're going to be going over here and in all honesty there are only two basic types of trends and let me show you what those are okay uh, here's the first trend a trend uh, is one of the trends is basically it increases going down and it also increases going across this way now this is one trend on the periodic table and the other trend is this exact opposite. So basically, if, if you were using this trend here, if you were moving down a column, you would be increasing in that one single column. Okay, And if you're moving across right to left, you would be increasing going through, well, I think I said column, uh, you would be increasing going through that one entire row. So if you're moving straight down in a column, then you're increasing. So basically this would be the, this tail end right here of this arrow would be the small end, the smallest value, and the arrowhead would show the largest value. Okay, so small to large. And the same thing on this arrow for any row on the periodic table. From here to here, you're increasing. So here's the small side in the row, and here's the greatest side in the row. Now, the other trend is it's opposite, like I said, going up and running across a row going this way okay these are the only two trends now this is how it moves across uh, the periodic table this way is increasing and on this other trend this way is increasing and on this trend going down a column is increasing and going up is increasing the real catch is which trend is used for what type of periodic patterns well, let me, just go, let me just go ahead and tell you this. Uh, this trend is for anything that deals with size. Okay, So if you were, were talking about atomic size, you would use this trend. Okay, So if they mention uh, atomic, uh, say, radius, you would use this trend as well. Now, even if they use the word uh, radii, you will use this trend as well. So the trend is if you're in a column, you've got three things, one thing, two things, three things here. The third one will be your largest. Okay, And if you were um, in, a, in a row like this, the first X, the second X, and the third X, the first X would be your largest because it's the one furthest to the left in that row. And if they're all jumbled across, just continue to use this pattern uh, to help you figure out. The one that's further down, if it's jumbled, for example, let's say that they randomly had some X's selected throughout. Uh, using the trend, you would say that this one would be the largest size or radius. Now. Uh, it's usually safe to say that uh, if they give you the word ionic size, you can uh, do this as well, or, the, or ionic radius or uh, ionic radii. Uh, you can use this pattern too. But you have to watch out for isoelectronic uh, series as well, things that are isoelectronic. And we'll uh, slowly get into that as well. Now, notice that this trend is for only size, okay? Uh, anytime they mention the word size or anytime they use the word radius or radii. Now this other trend over here is used for everything else. Yes, everything else. So I like to call this uh, fancy words. I can't remember if fancy has an E in it or not, but we'll just say it doesn't. But anyway, fancy words. Hey, I'm not the greatest speller. I think I'm hooked on spell check and Google and my cell phone to just... Uh, you know, announce, you know, basically pronounce a word and let it spell it for me. Yes, I cheat like that still to this day. But anyway, uh, so fancy words. And some examples of fancy words here 
uh, would be Electro, no, not Avenue, uh, Elect or Electric Avenue, <laughs> uh, Electron, uh, Electro Negativity. All right, now Electro Negativity. I don't even think I spelled that wrong. Man, it's a Tuesday. But anyway, uh, the next one could be like ionization energy. Okay. As you can tell, I'm doing this, you know, off the top of my head. So I'm horrible at spelling. But anyway, ionization energy. And the next one is like uh, electron uh, affinity. If you want to, you can actually uh, Google these and get their definitions and everything. I'm not really concentrating on their meaning, but uh, you can look it up if you want to and define the terms, and maybe that will help you to understand the uh, the trends better. But I'm here just specifically to show you how to apply these trends to uh, determine your answers. So anyway, uh, your fancy words. So these are the, the first three that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, electronegativity, ionization energy. Now I'm not talking about first and second and all those were just mainly ionization energy as a whole and electron affinity. So anyway, um, uh, it's the same thing applies here. Say this is the first X, the second X, the third X. If they're in the same column, notice that the top X here would have the largest electronegativity. It would also have the largest ionization energy and it would also have the largest electron affinity okay and if you were um, in the same row of uh, the first x the second x the third x notice the x that's closest to the arrow would be uh, your largest one now the only time that that's not true is if you're talking about electronegativity for like noble gases noble gases did not have uh, electronegativity in uh, once again, just make sure you remember that. But that's all there is to uh, the trends. So let's go ahead and look at a problem that we have here. Uh, one of the problems that, uh, there's the periodic table. Um, one of the problems that was sent to me for us to do is this one. It says rank the following in order of increasing ionization energy. Now, first of all, uh, we're going to work this problem by identifying what they're wanting us to find here they mentioned ionization energy so automatically the trend that pops into my head is this one the one going up and the one that's going over now uh, if you have access to a periodic table which I hope you do uh, that would be extremely beneficial so let's actually uh, look at this uh, periodic table that we have we have silicone uh, which is here so let me take a picture of this that way I can color it up for you guys I didn't think about taking a picture of it a while ago, but I am now. But anyway, let's take a picture of it so we can actually color it up, mark it up pretty good. So let me do that. I'm going to open, and hopefully it will be the most recent uh, screenshot that I have here and everything. So uh, the home page, you see desktop, desktop, uh, screenshot right here. Here we go. All right. Now one of the ones that they mentioned, ooh, definitely need to shrink this down a little bit. Uh, we'll say 75 percent all right uh, one of the ones that we ooh, that is blurry as crap let's change it back to say 90 percent all right that's better um, let's go back and look at the problem that we had given to us uh, they mentioned that we had silicone so let's color in silicone really quickly so uh, we've we've got it marked for ourselves I'll get grab my paint bucket and color this in all right they mentioned silicone so there's silicone which other one did they mention? They mentioned carbon, so there's carbon. Uh, they mentioned sulfur, and here is sulfur. And they mentioned fluorine, and here's fluorine. And the last one is calcium. Calcium's way over here. All right. Now, if you remember the trend that we're going to be using here, I'll draw on this periodic table so you can uh, see it. And remember, I'll draw it in red for us and make it really thick. Remember that the trend was going up this way is increasing and going across this way is increasing. And if you look, the one that's furthest down and to the left here is calcium. So it's actually uh, the least for this trend. So uh, knowing that uh, the calcium is the least, then we know to put it first because it's the smallest. Okay, so it's less than. It's less than what? Alright, so once we get calcium, we'll mark it off our list. We've got it out of the way. 
that leaves us with these. Well, we know that silicone is further down uh, than this, so it's smaller. Silicone is smaller than carbon, and we know that sulfur is also smaller than fluorine because it's further down as well. Okay, now the question is between these two, which one is smaller? Well, the one that's smaller between these two is silicone because uh, the one that's furthest to the right is sulfur in this row. So silicone will be listed next. So SI. Okay. And then after that, the next one that we should list was the sulfur that we compared it to. Notice that we compared silicone and sulfur to each other. You'll see that, right? So that's why this one gets marked out secondly, and this one is marked out thirdly. Okay. So you got that one, that one, and that one. Yes, that's an an I, a horrible one, but an I. All right, so that leaves us with, check this out, CA's gone, SI's gone, S is gone, that leaves us with C and F. Well, once again, C and F are in the same row. Well, which one is less? The one that's less is carbon. So it's going to be written next. Okay, so carbon. And which one is the greatest? The one that's greatest of all of these is fluorine. So F is written right here. Okay, so this one is now completed. We're done with this problem. Uh, so once again, this is our smallest. Okay, our smallest uh, uh, ionization energy. And this one is our largest. Okay, now let's look down here at this trend. On this trend, we're trying to uh, put them in order of increasing atomic radii. Okay, so let's go back and look at our periodic table that we really shouldn't have marked up so much, but I'm going to undo this. Okay. Now, um, I wish to... Let me see if I can just close... I can't undo it. Darn. All right. I'll close it out real quick. Okay. Now, I'll open it back up. Open up my periodic table. There it is. All right, so on this periodic table, I'm going to zoom to 90% again so I can get it all in there for us. All right, on this periodic table, we're going to look at F, F, S, and N. So fluorine, sulfur, and nitrogen, okay? So let's go ahead and take care of that. Turn on the bucket. It was sulfur, chlorine, and nitrogen. Is that right? Nope. Uh, F, S, N. <laughs> F, S, N. All right, undo. F, F, S, and N. Alright, so we have F, S, and N. Now, which one is the furthest down here? The one that's furthest down is sulfur. So by the pattern, uh, oh yeah, remember we're doing increasing atomic radii. Increasing atomic radii, its trend is going down and going across this way. Okay, so with that being said, let's look at that trend here. We'll turn on our big marker and turn on our brush. Remember, the trend is basically going down is the largest and running this way. So, looking at this trend, which one is the largest? Looks like sulfur is our largest. So, which one is our smallest? Well, it's going to be between these two. It's going to be fluorine. Fluorine is going to be our smallest. So, it says increasing order. So, the fluorine would be written first because it was the smallest. Okay, do you see that? Uh, all the tails are small. Okay, so here's the small side. Here's the small side. So further right, and the higher up it is. So the the most top right furthest, the mo <laughs> the most top right is fluorine of the three. So that's going to be our smallest. But our sulfur is our largest. So I'm going to write S last. So that means that the nitrogen has to be somewhere in the middle. And don't forget to put your signs in here. Okay. So once again, notice that this fluorine is our smallest, so it was written down first. Now between these two, since sulfur is further down, it's going to be larger. Okay, and then this nitrogen here, if you look at it, it is going to be uh, smaller because it's up higher. Okay, so there, that's why elf was first, nitrogen was second, and this was last. But anyway, this one has the largest radii and this one has the smallest. Alright guys. Anyway, I'll do some more, but uh, these two should be enough to get you started and to introduce you to uh, the periodic trends, and I hope it was helpful.
All right, guys.